Greetings, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another edition of What's Hot with Sea of Tranquility in the co-captain's chair today. From in the Prague seat, Mr. Anthony Ferraro. How you doing, my friend? How's things? Good, good, good. Good to be here. Good to have you. We've been talking about doing this one for a while. So, of course, we've got uh, Stephen Reed touched on this a couple of weeks ago on another previous show. But uh, Anthony I want, and I wanted to get kind of a little more in-depth on the uh, Jethro Tull A box set or a la mode as it's called 40th anniversary edition the 1980 album with associated tracks the full november 1980 la sports arena concert and slipstream video all remixed by stephen wilson to stereo and 5.1 surround oh what do you got there so you got the a track a cassette, track still in plastic um, the uh the two disc with the slipstream um, the bootleg show from the la sports arena which is called uh, the Pine Ian's Jig yeah. uh, program. Nice. And uh, the original Chrysalis issue. Wow, this is like Prop City here today. And then uh, the Japanese yeah. issue. What's uh, anything different on the Japanese issue versus? It's just, uh, I think it's a better quality sounding issue. Really? Okay. I mean, it's really good. I mean, it's not this, but it's pretty good. Yeah, this is uh, so I'm sure for those of you watching, you've probably seen a previous episode that I did where I talked uh, a bit about the Jethro Tull box sets that they've been releasing so far. So apparently we're going to get uh, Broadsword and the Beast uh, coming up next, next year. Spring. Next, next spring. spring and then Benefit this, this fall. This year? Yeah, this fall. So uh, this... You know, follows Stormwatch, which came last fall, I guess. I'm losing track of when these things came out. Yeah. But uh, so you've got basically disc one, original album and associated tracks. Associated tracks, meaning, you know, like uh, Crossfire extended version, Working John, Working Joe, Take Four, Cheerio early version. Uh, how do you say this? Koryask? Yeah, something like that. Something like that. And then the Slipstream introduction. So, which is uh, cool because on the uh, on the bootleg and on the yeah, on the bootleg they don't have the introduction of the slipstream, which is in the DVD. But it's cool that on the uh, on the show on track one they kind of put that in there as the beginning, which is really cool because that's yeah. this cool just kind of cool intro for a band. Yep, yep, I agree. It's very cool, and I, I like the uh, the Corey esque track. I think that's pretty cool. I think on most of these box set reissues, uh, Ian has just pulled out some really cool stuff from the vaults that, like, you're almost like astounded that it didn't make the original album, right? But uh, your take on the Stephen Wilson stereo remix on this? Uh, it's pretty amazing. I know a lot of people for years have complained about the production uh, that they thought the, the the music was mixed a little too low. That didn't hurt. I mean, that never really bothered me too much because it's such I love it so much because of Jobson. And I just thought that they had a great chemistry. But the, the new Wilson remix is punchy. Uh, you could tell right from the beginning. It just sounded just uh, just that he is one of the one of the best producers out there. He, you know, you can tell by his Porcupine Tree albums he produces uh, the couple of the Opeth. I mean, they just sound stellar. They really do. Yeah. They sound very audiophile when they don't when you're not playing it maybe on an audiophile system. Yeah, exactly. I, I love the brightness of it. And I think um, like the keyboards especially are just kind of like, wow, just like kind of just jump right out at you. But I think, uh, I, you know, I never thought this was a bad sounding album to begin with, I, but I think it definitely sounds better now with this, uh, with this remix, definitely different. Um, I've listened to it in the car. I've listened to it on a cheap CD player and I've listened to it on my home theater system. And uh, it's pretty impressive no matter where you listen to it. So uh, I think it's really good. And, uh, but to me, it's not the highlight of this set, right? I mean, the highlight of this set is the uh, the live stuff from the LA Sports Arena. Great. Concert. The only drawback, I mean, <clears throat> these are all really pretty awesome. I mean, the books are in great detail, great interviews, the tour dates, uh, cool pictures. Uh, the only the only drawback was is I was hoping for some additional footage, uh, but supposedly that was. I don't know, trashed or lost or whatever. But uh, yeah, the, 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 live, the live shows from the uh, LA Sports Arena are just, you know, 
killer. And I've had this, you know, I had this boot. I mean, it's a, it's, it's a pretty decent sounding boot. It's a soundboard, but I've had this for years. And when I knew that was going to be the show on this, I was pretty pumped. Yeah. And it's great. I mean, the performance, it sounds great. The performances are stellar and uh, you know, it just, uh, Again, I, I say it over and over and over again every time one of these comes out. It's like it's just hard to believe that Ian has been holding on to this stuff yeah. for so many years. I mean, and uh, the track listing is great. You know, you get a good chunk of the new album at the time, which was, you know, predetermined. That's what they wanted to do. And, you know, interspersed with uh, a really strong, like Hunting Girl is fantastic on here. You've got, um, you know, what other all uh, songs in the wood is great. Uh, heavy horses is awesome you know and then you got like some aqua long locomotive breath bungle in the jungle so on and so forth but i think the uh the tracks from the album sound fantastic i mean they open up with black sunday yeah my favorite song from the album and it just sounds amazing right and then you have uh protect and survive with the just jaw dropping goose bumping or violin solo because that track is like three or four minutes long and i remember getting the boot and it said it was like eight minutes i'm like okay yeah, and <laughs> like the song ends and all of a sudden eddie kicks into this violin solo that's just unreal and then he does a little improv to precursor of some of the tracks some of the instrumentations on the green album to follow which was cool i would have loved to seen that live footage but you know didn't happen yeah yeah i know well Maybe someday, um, but it's cool nonetheless. I mean, as a as a kind of like a cool new live album from the band from this time period, it's welcome, I think. And uh, then you got on you got the the DVD three of them, right? So you got DVD one, which is audio only, of the uh, the remix, okay, in all sorts of different formats. Uh, DVD two audio only is the full live show. And then on DVD three, of course, is the video, the slipstream video, which, you know, we've all seen before, but, uh, you know, it's kind of cool to have it here in this whole package. You got to have it here, right? Oh, yeah. And uh, I will say, as always, the uh, the booklet or the book, it's, it's not a booklet, it's a book. No, it's yeah, like a book box set. Yeah. I mean, what, it's a like hundred pages. I mean, you've got all sorts of cool you know, anecdotes from all the guys in the band uh, about the tour, the making of the album, you get tons of pictures, photographs, uh, and then you got, you know, interviews. And I mean, it's just really cool tour dates. I mean, just for the, the tall geek, I mean, what's not to love about this stuff? And for people who have never seen the, the Slipstream video, it's still, even though there wasn't extra footage, it's still a precious piece it's a it's a precious documentation of the tour i mean there's some just some stellar stuff with jobson playing the violin jobson on the keys craney on the drums i mean it's just it's it's gorgeous it's too bad there wasn't more yes and you get the video for working john working joe on there also yeah, which yeah. i think was a uh from heavy horses sessions you might be right yeah i don't remember offhand but yeah you might be right but yeah, it's uh, well worth getting. And uh, I will say to anybody that's interested in this or any of the tell box that's when they come out, you got to jump Get on them because they only make what, about 2000 of them, I think. Uh, there, a lot of people are selling them. So maybe they more made more this time. Well, they should because all the other ones were gone like before you know it. It's like if you didn't oh, get I know. them in a couple months, forget it. And then all of a sudden they're like 100, 200, $300, you know, to buy them wherever. So uh, yeah, and it's, Hardcover, hundred page book, uh, and then you got the uh, the five discs. So it's uh, it's definitely definitely something to pick up if you're a fan. Um, and I'm a fan, so I, I, we we pre ordered this from Mr. Golden over at Laser's Edge and uh, had it here at the house shortly thereafter when it was finally released. So yeah, I don't know. I think we kind of covered it all, right? I mean, it sounds great. It's a, it's a fun album. Uh, originally supposed to be an Ian solo album they decide you know the record label decided well why don't we make it a Jethro Tull album uh you know whole new band you know you got David Pegg here and Mark Craney Eddie Jobson of course Martin Barr the only holdover from the previous uh, incarnation of Jethro Tull but uh yeah super stuff one and only album with this lineup sadly but um pretty well that's why it's I guess that's why he's a special guest because I guess Eddie had basically told Ian that he was just going to sign on for this and that was it yeah yeah 
And I guess he's the reason why Mark Craney joined because Mark Eddie brought Mark. He said, I'll bring my buddy Mark for the, because at, at the time it was still going to be an Ian Anderson album. And I don't think Eddie thought it was even going to amount to much, but he was just going to play on the album and that was it. And then all of a sudden they're out touring the big arenas and everything yes, like that, yes. right? It's like, ooh, this is, uh, this is not my White Snake opened up on some of the shows. I know. Is that crazy? Yeah. Weird fit. That's a weird fit. But, uh, well, a little piece of rock history, everybody. So there you have it. Uh, Jethro Tull A, or as the box set is known as A La Mode, right? So uh, A plus all sorts of other stuff. Uh, very cool. You can, you can get it uh, for less than 50 bucks. Uh, you know, I think this was 43 or 45, something like that. So uh, well worth it. Get it now before it skyrockets in price and it becomes hard to find and uh, add it to your collection. My Tull box set collection is growing thanks to you because actually my, my first one showed up uh, like two years ago because of you. That was uh, Heavy Horses, I think, wasn't it? Heavy Horses, yeah. yeah. And I don't have them all. Um, you know, I don't have thick songs from the wood is just yeah. Everywhere you look, they want like over two hundred bucks for them. Like, Oof. I know, yeah, that and thick as a brick are the only ones I don't. Oh wait, I don't have um, War Child either. That's expensive. Also, I have all the others, but um, yeah, and like Minstrel was hard to track down at a decent price. I, I did. I won a bid on that. Paid more than I wanted to, but uh, that that's a good one. That's a good one. Well, and, and I mean, the thing, I Minstrel could have been better. I, I think that like ugh, some of the they only played a couple of tunes off that album uh, for live it's like oh yeah and you and i were talking last week on how great that record is and you said as we, we get older it sounds amazing yeah, like martin Barr's guitar work oh it's amazing yeah minstrel has become one of my favorites in the whole catalog um and you know i mean all these albums are really really good and uh, i'm looking forward to seeing what they do with uh with broadsword and uh you know we'll see if they go any further than that i mean well, they were the saying that, you gotta uh, just do the whole catalog you've already done all this <laughs> Well, Roots to Branches would be cool because I saw that tour. Yeah, I did too. Yeah, I, I'm a big fan of that album. I, I think, you know, Rock Island would be cool to do something with. I'm sure there's plenty of live stuff from that. Uh, Crest of the Nave would be cool. I mean, I could care less about the other album, which I won't name right now, which kind of sits in between these ones that we're talking oh, about. Yeah. But um, but yeah, the others, I mean, I think, I, I mean, I get them. If, if they decide to do them, I'll get them. So. We're sucker for live stuff, Pete. I'm telling you, the curse, man, the curse curse of the collector it's uh well supposedly for the uh the broadsword uh box set supposedly there's like 30 unreleased tracks that may have pop up on there oh this thing could be massive <laughs> yeah i know now, i haven't heard what's going to be on the benefit one so i bought the the other benefit like a little okay. mini one um and that's pretty cool but it's, there's not a lot of unreleased stuff on there so i'm wondering what the uh the full box will look like i don't know why they didn't release that at the time you know it's like yeah they, they skipped over it or something well, maybe they didn't. I, I don't think the box, when they released that, I don't think they had released any of the book box sets yet. I don't think. But I could be wrong. Maybe that's, and then he saw everything start to take off. And yeah, it's just weird they skipped over it and they just didn't, you know. But hey, better late than never, I always say. And so, I'll be interested to see what the, uh, the Benefit Live show is going to be. Yeah. I mean, that era. Oh. Oh. Amazing. Amazing. So there you have it, everybody. Uh, a look at A, the box set, a la mode. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Visit us on the web at www.catranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. Of course, we're here on YouTube all the damn time. Stay tuned uh, for more stuff coming up here on the channel. Anthony will be back next week, uh, I believe, on in the prog seat, right? Is that next Tuesday where we're doing another one? I think so, right? I believe so, yes. Indeed. So stay tuned for that each and every Tuesday night in the prog seat. Uh, Monday is uh, Hudson Valley Squares. Wednesday is new product review day. Thursday is the Monsters Den. Friday is uh, Friday at the Funhouse with Martin Popoff and then whatever else in between all that. So stay tuned for more stuff, everybody. Thanks for watching. For Anthony Ferrara, I am Pete Pardo. Have a good one.